Welcome to A Fresh Start with Dr. Bobby Mullins, Executive Director of A Fresh Start Ministries. At some time, we all need a fresh start. And each week on A Fresh Start TV program, you'll hear a relevant message straight from the Bible, providing examples and principles to show us how to start over again. Join us now for this edition of A Fresh Start as Dr. Mullins proclaims from the Word of God how to live the abundant life Jesus desires for all of us to experience. What on earth are you waiting for? There's nothing here worth missing heaven for. Happiness is waiting at your heart's door. Let Jesus in. Let him in today. You got heaven to gain. What on earth are you waiting for? If the rich young ruler had you over tonight, he'd tell the Lord that the price was right. He wouldn't wait another minute, waited down for what riches afford. And the old King Agrippa just talked to you, he'd say, almost brother will never do. You've got heaven to gain. What on earth are you waiting for? What on earth are you waiting for? There's nothing here worth missing heaven for. Happiness is waiting at your heart's door. Let Jesus in. Let him in today. You got heaven to gain. What on earth are you waiting for? If waiting on starry-eyed dreams to unfold And chasing illusions of your pot of gold As you're waiting on giving your life over to the Lord All the tinsel will tarnish, the glitter will fade And all of this life will all pass away And with heaven to gain, what on earth are you waiting for? What on earth are you waiting for? There's nothing here worth missing heaven for. Happiness is waiting at your heart's door. Let Jesus see. Let him in today. You got heaven to gain. What on earth are you waiting for? Satan will paint you a picture of this world that is priceless and rare but in heaven the best of this world hails to the splendor up there up there what on earth are you waiting for there's nothing here worth missing heaven for happiness is waiting in your heart's door let Jesus see, let him in today. You got heaven to gain, what on earth are you waiting for? You got heaven to gain, what on earth are you waiting for? Wow, what on earth are you waiting for? And on this particular program, one of the things that we want you to consider and ask the question yourself, do you really know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? I've mentioned that uh, part of this program now is allowing me to go back to my spiritual roots and where I started in ministry about 37 or 30 years ago. At that time, I had a guitar, and really I was in music ministry, really didn't do much preaching at that time. But we didn't have soundtracks, and unless you had your own musicians, you basically had to have some type of instrument to take along to accompany yourself. And so, for moral support, I've got my old guitar 
with me here in the studio and from time to time what I want to do is go back 25, 30 years ago or so and pull out one of the songs that I used to sing back then. Now I'm thankful for soundtracks. I wasn't that good of a guitarist, but I want to sing a song tonight that tells about what happens when a person truly gets saved and Jesus Christ comes in their life. And later in the program when I share a message, I'm going to tell you about probably the greatest miracle of a man's life being changed that I have personally uh, ever experienced from someone I've known. But this is a great song that I used to sing back around 1973 or 74. The Oak Ridge Boys originally recorded it. But it's titled, The Baptism of Jesse Taylor. Among the local towns, there'll be a slack in business. Cause Jesse's drinking came before the groceries and the rent. Among the local women, there'll be a slack and cheap. Cause Jesse won't be stepping out again. Cause they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained the soul and Satan lost a good right arm. They all cried hallelujah when Jesse's head went under. Cause this time he went under for the Lord. The scars on Jesse's knuckles were more than just respected. The county courthouse records tell all there is to tell. The pockets of the gamblers will soon miss Jesse's money. And the black eye of the law will soon be well. Cause they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday. Jesus gained the soul and Satan lost a good right arm. They all cried hallelujah when Jesse's head went under. Cause this time he went under for the Lord. Now on Nancy Taylor can proudly speak to neighbors and tell them how much Jesse took up with little Jim. Now Jimmy's got a daddy and Jesse's got a family and Franklin County's got a lot more man. Cause they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday Jesus gained the soul and Satan lost a good right arm They all cried hallelujah when Jesse's head went under Cause this time he went under for the Lord Oh they baptized Jesse Taylor in Cedar Creek last Sunday Jesus gained the soul and Satan lost the good right arm. They all cried hallelujah when Jesse's head went under. Cause this time he went under for the Lord. This time he went under for the Lord. I guess if there was any song that could really be a theme song for our ministry other than a song that I wrote called A Fresh Start, which we'll sing for you on one of these programs, it would be that song, What on Earth Are You Waiting For, that I sang earlier in the program. Because the purpose of our ministry is a fresh start, and at some time we all need a fresh start. But tonight in the message, I want to deal with the fresh start that we all need, which is the fresh start of salvation. But before I get to the message, I do want pastors to be aware that I've sent out 
quite a few letters to pastors and churches in this area about the possibility of uh, being able to be at your church for a fresh start Sunday. I can even do revivals and then pulpit supply and there are other ways that we could minister through your church. If you didn't receive a letter from me, the best way to contact me is via email. And my email address is brobmullins at aol.com. If you want to know more about our ministry, you can go to my website, www.drbobbymullins.com. Or you can mail us at P.O. Box 32486, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37930. Now, one thing that I have to do as part of a Fresh Start TV program is that uh, we're dependent upon our viewers to be our supporters as far as how we are able to finance this television program. I have some wonderful people I've known from churches where I've pastored and, and other folks in this area who I've known for years who have been very generous in giving toward our ministry that we can have this TV program. And I want to read you a letter that I recently received from a, a dear lady. She said, Brother Bobby, as the Fresh Start Ministry advances the kingdom of God in 2010, may the words of the song bring them in, turn into reality, and may you experience accompanying joy of reaching more for Christ than ever before. I'll be praying that the Lord will provide the funds for the television program and as you share and provide examples and principles from the Bible, that those who need to be born again will make a fresh start and that countless numbers who have strayed due to life's issues and situations will renew their faith and gain new heights in their faith to a higher level. And that lady graciously donated several hundred dollars to our ministry. A couple of significant ways to give to our ministry I've mentioned before is Gideon's 300. I'm praying that God would raise up 300 individuals or couples who could give $300 initially in a gift as we begin our ministry. And you can do the math on that. That would provide a great foundation for us in being able to get a Fresh Start Ministries uh, firmly planted as the ministry that we want it to be. But recently I received a, a letter from a couple about the age of my wife and I. They have three children. Just like Juan and I, two, their two oldest children recently graduated from college. They have a child who's in college now. But they were writing to me to say how they believe a Fresh Start Ministries and our concept of a Fresh Start TV program is so needed today because both of them had to, had to make a fresh start uh, at some time in their life. And they enclosed a check for $100. And they said, Brother Bobby, as long as we're able and God blesses us, we want to give $100 a month to your ministry. So we not only have the Gideon's 300 givers, but uh, there's a group that I want to refer to as the hundredfold blessing uh, givers, that if you could give $100 to our ministry over a year's time, and I'm praying God would give us 100 individuals or couples who could do that, again, that would provide the finances that we need to get off the ground and for my being able to go full time with the Fresh Start Ministries. You know, $300 is a wonderful gift. $100 is a wonderful gift. And prior to my resigning as a senior pastor of a church, God had really blessed me. And my wife and I were actually able to give close to about $300 a week in our tithes and the offerings that we would give to our church and into other organizations. But I know what kind of a sacrifice it would be to give $300 or even $100 a month but my wife and I have also made that commitment that we're going to be a part of the Hundredfold Blessing Club because we believe in what we're seeking to do through a Fresh Start Ministries. So if you could help us out and give to our ministry, again, there on the screen will be our mailing address, which is P.O. Box 32486, Knoxville, Tennessee 37930. Or you can go to my website, and there is a donations link, and if you could be a part of the Gideon's 300 or the 100-fold Blessing Club, maybe you can't give that much, but you could give $5, 10 $15. Uh, we will greatly appreciate it. And I can assure you, it will all be used to glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, tonight, I want us to think about the greatest thing, and I want you to think about it as I share with you the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Well, the greatest thing that ever happened to me happened actually on April 3rd, 1962, when I asked Jesus Christ into my heart 
as my Lord and Savior. Now I want you to know where I stand when it comes to the issue of salvation. I believe, first of all, the Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 9, that the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation. It says over in the last chapter of Revelation, whosoever will may come. I believe that Jesus died for everyone, and especially for all sinners, and that every one of us, it's our choice whether we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. So when I was a young boy, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior on a Tuesday night. I remember it very distinctively. April 3rd, 1962, I called my mom and dad into my bedroom after we'd been at a revival service and told them what had happened to me. And then that next night on April 4th, 1962, I publicly professed my faith in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And then that following Sunday, I was baptized in believer's baptism. Now, I sang about the baptism of Jesse Taylor. I want you to realize baptism does not save you. That's something that you do within your heart that's between you and the Lord. But baptism is something that we ought to do to show people that we have followed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and then to identify with His death, burial, and resurrection. You know, a very scholarly man came to Jesus when Jesus was walking this earth in the three and a half years of his ministry unlike any time on earth when Christ was physically there with people living life just like you and I live it every day faced with the very temptations we're faced with and in the third chapter of the book of John the Bible says in verse 1 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews and the same man came to Jesus by night and said unto him rabbi or teacher we know that you are a teacher who has come from God for no man can do the miracles that you have done except God be with you. And listen to what Jesus had to say to this man. Jesus said, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. I guess as I think about the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, if you've never had that great thing happen to you in your life as the song says that I sang about earlier, what on earth are you waiting for? Don't let anything on this earth keep you from coming to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You know, coming to know Christ as our personal Lord and Savior is not something, well, it's different how I come to know Christ. It's different how you come to know Christ. No, it's the same way for all of us. And Nicodemus, after the Lord had said to him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered again. Whenever Jesus says verily, verily, or truly, truly, he has something special of great significance that he wants us to hear. And Jesus said, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. And so that's basically, friends, what it is to come to know Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's to have a rebirth, to be born again spiritually. And the greatest verse in the Bible, which many people would admit, is John 3, 16. The Lord Jesus said, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. The process of salvation is very simple. We see in John 3, 16, God's promise of salvation. The motivation behind salvation. For God so loved the world, the mediator for salvation, that He gave His only begotten Son, the means of salvation, that whosoever believes in Him and the message of salvation should not perish, but have everlasting life. That doesn't mean we're going to live a life of perfection. We'll still sin, but our sins have been forgiven. But the Lord, after you get saved, the Lord wants you to have an abundant, overcoming life. And the only way you can have that life is to have that fresh start, to be born again by trusting in Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior. 
You see, when you get saved, your life changes. I remember a young lady years ago who was just a real sweet Christian girl. And I remember one night her telling, uh, someone asked her a testimony. She said, well, my, my testimony is not very exciting. She said, I never drank. I never did a lot of things you shouldn't do. And then she went on to tell how as a young girl she had accepted Christ. Well, to me, I told her, I said, you've almost got a miraculous testimony. Because most of us have done things we really wish we hadn't have done. And sometimes I know people who've been gravely into sin and the things of the world that have almost run their life, but then they were gloriously saved. So I told her, don't ever say you don't have much of a testimony. But I mentioned earlier in the broadcast about probably the greatest salvation experience I know of a person I know personally. And it was with a man named John Bramlett. John Bramlett played football at Memphis State University in the early 60s. He was known as John Bull Bramlett. He played football and baseball. Matter of fact, he went to Humes High School. He knew Elvis Presley. He grew up with Elvis. But John was just a tremendous athlete. He got drafted out of college into baseball, and they had to kick him out of baseball because he got in too many fights. And then he became a pro football player and had a very illustrious career. But I tell you what, I remember as a kid growing up, I would hear stories all the time about John Bramlett. And I, we'd hear about him going into some restaurant or bar and someone picking a fight with him, and boy, he would clear the place out. He was probably at one time the meanest man in Memphis, Tennessee. And Memphis is a pretty big city. But that's the kind of reputation that John Bramlett had. But I remember between my junior and senior year of college, at my church we were having a time where the college students and high school students all came together for a special emphasis. And they told us that our special guest speaker was going to be John Bramlett and he was going to give his testimony. I thought, wow. John Bramlett has gotten saved. I thought they must have brought in Billy Graham to witness to him or whatever, but this will be for another message. But it was just two very ordinary men, ordinary men like you and me or ordinary women who were the ones who actually went to John Bramlett's one ha house one night and shared with him how to be saved. You know what John said was the thing that got to him the most? Is when those men were leaving, they said, John, we love you in Jesus Christ. And he said that no man, not even in his own dad at that time, had ever told him he loved him. He said that night God got a hold of his life. He went to his refrigerator. He took the beer that he had there, poured it out. He smoked cigarettes. He threw his cigarettes out, got rid of his whiskey. And God changed John Bramlett's life right then. He was born again. He became a new creation. And see, that's the whole key, like the baptism of Jesse Taylor. When you get saved, your life changes. One of the things I like particularly about that song, The Baptism of Jesse Taylor, is that line where it says, Franklin County's got a lot more man. And this time he went under, but this time he went under for the Lord. Here on this program and in the Fresh Start Ministries, one of our goals is to lead as many people as possible to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You see, man has a problem with sin. The depth of sin is that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The dilemma of sin is just that. We've come short of the glory of God, and the debt of sin is for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But there is a deliverance from sin, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And you see, God has made a way that you can be saved just like John Bramlett. Matter of fact, John Bramlett became a minister. He's had a wonderful ministry through the years. Thousands of people have come to know Christ through the ministry of John Bramlett. And what did he do that you can do too to have forgiveness of your sins? First of all, admit that you're a sinner. Secondly, reconcile or ascertain that you cannot save yourself. For by grace we are saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. And then ask God to forgive you. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know I've sinned. I know that Jesus died for my sins. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And ask forgiveness of your sins. And then acknowledge Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It's as simple as ABC. First, accept God's free gift 
of eternal life personally. For by grace, God's riches at Christ's expenses, for by grace are you saved through faith, forsaking all, I trust Him. And then believe privately in your heart. You know, if I could cause you to be saved, I could do something on your behalf for you to be saved, I'd do it, but, but I can't. That's something you've got to do. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, you will be saved. And then the next step that's an important step is to confess publicly. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. One of the things we want to do if we had the opportunity to come to your church for a fresh start Sunday is to help people come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I'm going to say a quick prayer. And if you pray that prayer along with me, uh, I'm just doing it so you can know in your heart that you've asked Jesus into your life. Just say something like this. Dear God, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I admit that I'm a sinner. I confess of my sins and I want to turn from my sins and I want to ask Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and I commit to live for Christ from this day on. Now, friends, that's a very simple prayer. Only you know if you truly meant it. But if you did, there's something that I want you to do. If you're a member of a church, I want you to go to church this next Sunday and you tell your pastor what you have done. If they have an invitation time at the end of that service, you go down there and you profess your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not involved in a church, then you just pray and ask people around you. If there's someone you think is a, a Christian and you know it by the way they live, ask them where they go to church. Ask them if you can go with them. But get involved in a church. We want to help you through a Fresh Start TV program. But you'll need to be in a church and be somewhere where on a weekly basis you can meet with other Christians and have fellowship and be able to grow in the Lord. Well, I've shared with you the greatest thing that's happened to me. See, Jesus came that we might have life abundantly. He conquered sin and death to give life eternally. That's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And you know, if you're not saved from sin, it's something only you can do. But how Jesus saved me is the same way that He'll save you too. Repent of your sin and commit to live for Him. He'll give you a fresh new start and you'll be born again. Oh, my dear friends, I pray tonight that some of you watching our program have made that fresh start of being born again. At some time, we all need a fresh start. But the one thing that I can tell you, all of us, every one of us needs that fresh start of being born again. God bless you until we're able to meet again on a Fresh Start TV program.